So today I'm going to talk about something called centrifugal and centripetal motion. And so I did this demonstration in one of my science classes, and it's a pretty neat trick. I've seen this done on some additional YouTube channels. So Bruce Yeeney is where I originally saw this uh, demonstration done, and so I'll drop a link to his channel down in the comments below. You can check out his uh, information, some of the other things that he has done. And so basically what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a, a neat little trick. And so it's based on this principle. So you have a, a device that uh, is suspended from four strings, one in each corner. And so what this is allows you to do is to demonstrate the principles of centrifugal or centripetal motion. So what happens is if you place a bottle, we're going to start with a bottle here. And so if you place this bottle on this little rig here, so you'll notice as you're spinning the bottle, notice the movement of the water. Uh, the water stays almost perfectly flat whether it's off to the sides or whether it's up to the top. And then you can take this spinning rig and you can spin it all the way around. And you can see that it does not fall off. And you can see it gets a little bit more challenging if you flip it over onto its cap. All right, so now the same principle can be done with not just a closed bottle of water, but also an open cup of water. You might have seen this uh, if you saw my Instagram post here uh, this past week and uh, showed how this works, but I'll try to demonstrate this a little bit closer to the camera here so you can see what's happening. And just so you can tell that it's not glued onto the side of the piece of wood, you can see there. And this same principle works even if you have a stack of objects that are just kind of balanced on top of each other. So here we have a stack of coins. And this is a demonstration of another uh, little neat trick that you can show people, but uh, further adds to the complexity of doing this spinning with the, the centrifugal force. So you have a block of wood, you pound a nail into it, and then you can progressively balance 14 other nails or 13 other nails on top. So now when you go to pick them up, the heads of the nails will catch the top nail and the bottom nail, and you can balance them on top of this nail here if it works for us. And then you can take this same principle and you can apply it to the centrifugal force that we just did. Uh, we'll see if this works for us here. So now you can see how the nails are all balanced here. And then we'll see if we can get this to work. And 
And so here you can see that they are in fact not glued onto the nail. So what's happening here? There are two different forces that are at work. One is called centripetal motion and one is called centrifugal motion. Centripetal motion basically means center seeking. So the fact that you have an object, you're holding it in, in the center with something spinning around, the object that you're spinning wants to continue moving in a straight line. However, you're holding onto the string, so it's tethered in the middle. And what it does is it causes it to try to seek the center of the circle. But since it's continual motion and you continue adding a little bit of extra momentum in there, it continues traveling in an arc around your hand. And you can see that it wants to travel in a straight line because if you let go, it's going to sail off in a particular direction and it's, not going, and it's going to be straight. So the other force at work here is called centrifugal motion. And that is basically the opposite. And it operates on the principle of center leaving. So as you're spinning an object around in a circle, you feel a force pulling against your hand. It's not just the weight of the object. It's actually what we would call centrifugal motion. And it's the desire for that object to want to leave or to go away from your hand. So in the objects that we're using here, let's just take the cup of water, for example. The water, as it's spinning around in a circle, it has a tendency that the water wants to leave the circle. So water is a fluid, and therefore, if you move it in a certain direction, it's going to want to continue moving in that direction. But there's something that's limiting or hindering its movement, and that is the container that it's in, or the cup. They are illustrating centripetal motion, which is the desire to want to move towards the center. So the cup wants to move towards the center, the water wants to move away from center, and so you have these two forces that cancel each other out, and they hold those objects directly in place and do not allow them to, to uh, move in any other direction. So you can also see illustrated here in the slow motion footage that as it's moving in an arc, you can see that the fluids are in a straight direction. If you were to hold this container up, this way, you can see that the water wants to go in a flat direction, all right? But when you tip it up right, because, top right, when you tip it up right, because of the force of gravity, it wants to go to the lowest point. But what you'll see here, as we spin it around in a circle, when it gets to these points out here and even above, the water is actually at a level plane because the water wants to leave. It wants to go away from the circle. This, the bottle that it's contained in, because it's held by that little platform, it's having the opposite effect. And so the, the two forces cancel each other out and they act in opposite directions. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, check out those comments down in the description if you want to see any of those other videos. Hopefully you subscribe to my channel if you like this and any other videos along this line. And we hope to see you again on the next one.